Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. Pokemon games have been a big part of my childhood and I've loved the games ever since I put a Pokemon Silver cartridge into my Nintendo Game Boy. While Pokemon is amazing in many ways, I plan to talk about a certain subject for today, and that's theories based on Pokemon. Some can be interesting, some can be weird, and others can just be downright bad. But today, I'm going to list to you guys my top 10 favorite theories on Pokemon. Let's begin. We're going to start off with a very underwhelming theory, and one that has been done to death, which is a theory that Ash is in a coma in the Pokemon anime. As the theory goes, during the first episode of the Pokemon anime, Ash is accidentally electrocuted by one of Pikachu's attacks, when trying to fight off the Spearows that were attacking Ash. And while that happened, allegedly he slipped into a coma. The coma theory can vary in many ways, but just to simple it down, when Ash got electrocuted, he slipped into a coma, and a Pokemon appeared at the end of the episode, which is Ho-Ho, which grants eternal happiness. So as the theory goes, that Ash is just living in his dreams because of Ho-Ho, and in reality, he's just slipping in a coma. Pretty much explains why he never ages, why Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny are pretty much the same people throughout the entire, the, like, the entirety of his freaking uh, adventure. And it also explains why, you know, I mean, everything goes right for Ash, well, actually, eh, not really, but he gets, he, the journey never ends, and he's having fun, so, I mean, that's what Ho-Ho does, right? Grant eternal happiness. Then again, it is a cartoon, so, I mean, come on, are they really gonna age Ash? Like, come on, come on. I don't know, I don't know how to feel about this theory, if I'm being honest. Uh, I don't think it's true. I'm only putting this low on the list because I feel like if I didn't include it, people would be mad at me. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just Ash and a coma, like like all the other theories. Not really that interesting. But hey, maybe maybe you don't know. Maybe this one day could be true. Only time will tell. During the rival battle on board the SSN in Pokemon Red and Blue, Gary uses Eradicate as part of his team. This makes sense as he's shown to have caught a Rattata during the early stages of the game. Whenever players next encounter Gary, however, the Pokemon is nowhere to be seen, leading many to question whether it died as a result of the injuries from the last battle, or, you know, he just put it in the PC because, well, Raticate sucks, no offense. But some people like me have suggested that Gary, you know, simply swapped it out for a stronger Pokemon. I mean, it makes sense, but at the same time, this seems unlikely given the fact that he only has a team of five. Like, why would you just take out a Pokemon if you're not going to replace it, right? Another rival battle you have with Gary takes place in the infamous Lavender Town's Pokemon Tower, a place where the souls of departed Pokemon are laid to rest. Further strains the idea that Gary was unable to get the poor Raticate to a Pokemon Center in the time following, even saying to the main character at one point, What are you doing here? Your Pokemon don't look dead. Pretty much hinting that this is true. When looking at both Butterfree and Venonat, this theory does not come as a shock as they both have very similar features. Some people believe that the similarity between the two is simply because of the creators of the game had so many Pokemon to create. It is assumed that they were switched either on accident and left that way or on purpose because the creators wanted to keep their fans on their feet. Either way, it looks like Venonmoth should evolve from a Metapod and Butterfree should evolve from a Venonet. Hmm, what do you guys think? The long lasting theory about Pokemon is that Gengar is actually Clefable's ghost. This is based on the two creatures incredibly having similar silhouettes and the fact that minus their eyes, they look like palette swapped versions of each other. Someone took this a step further, that Gengar isn't actually Clefable's shadow, but her ghost. This evidence points out to Gengar's typing obviously being a ghost Pokemon. In the setting, ghost Pokemon are born from tragedies such as death. Factor in the similarities between Clefable and Gengar such as their need to be social and preference for the shadows. When looking at the two, it's pretty obvious that they look very similar, and while Nintendo could have just 
made made out like the easy way out and just you know grab two pokemon that look similar and just change their appearances i don't think they do this and i think they do it on purpose so who knows maybe this could be true maybe it could be not The Pokemon War killed many adults in the Pokemon world. In both the show and the game, there were multiple hints at a great Pokemon War that happened in the past. Lieutenant Surge, the Electro-type gym leader, talks about battling in the Pokemon War with his Electabuzz. While it is never truly talked about, there is no doubt that something happened, even if it doesn't go into it much. There is no doubt that the war was real, but it would make sense as to why there's not many adults in the Pokemon world and how there are many kids around, just mainly kids, is because all the adults went to war and lost their lives. This is why we never see Ash's dad in the Pokemon anime, but instead his mother is shown. Maybe that's why his dad never appears, because he lost his life in the war. Now you probably didn't know this one, and to be honest I didn't even know this one either until I did some research. When Mimikyu was released, it got a lot of love for its backstory, especially its song. It was always said that Mimikyu wanted to be as popular as Pikachu, and it even dressed up as Pikachu. This theory dwells deeper into why Mimikyu wanted to dress up as Pikachu rather than just popularity. It states that Mimikyu are just Pichu that passed away before becoming a Pikachu, and now that it's moved on, it still wants to evolve. This evidence to back this theory up is that Mimikyu is a ghost slash fairy type for the deceased Pichu. Mimikyu also knows the move Thunderbolt and shares multiple moves with Pichu, making this theory make more sense than it should. Do you believe this to be true? Mount Moon is a special place for a couple of reasons. The main reason that it's special is that it is the only place that a trainer can come across Pokemon fossils, rare stones, and a shit ton of Clefairies and Jigglypuffs. There is one theory above all else that is widely accepted and that makes the most sense. This theory states that Clefairies come from space and landed in this spot on a rock. After landing here, they made it their own home, which is why there are so many of them around here. The three legendary beasts are some of the most mysterious creatures in the Pokemon franchise. Like all legendaries, they are incredibly powerful and hard to obtain. Many legendary Pokemon are often based on lore revolving around creation and destruction, and the legendary beasts are no different. The trio, comprised of Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, were first introduced in Pokemon Gold and Silver. Between the games and the anime, fans learned that the trio was created when the Brass Tower in Ecruteague City burned down 150 years before Generation 2 took place taken the lives of three unnamed Pokemon. Devastated, Ho-Ho revived the Pokemon into the legendaries they are today, each representing a stage of the tower's destruction. Raikou, the electric Pokemon, symbolizes the lightning bolt that struck the tower. Entei, a fire type, represents the fire that burned it down. And Suicune, a water type, embodies the rain that extinguished the fire. Fans have speculated as to what kind of Pokemon the legendary beasts were prior to their resurrection. Most people believe it to be the Eevee evolutions, being that of Vaporeon, Flareon, and Jolteon. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that these Pokemon could have been the legendary beasts? Who knows? Now this one is actually pretty interesting. The theory states that Ditto was a failed attempt by scientists to try to make a clone of the legendary Pokemon Mew. It is stated in the theory that Ditto was made right before the infamous Mewtwo. There are several reasons that people think that this is plausible. Firstly, they are very similar in color, but not only that, they both have similar shiny forms as well, being light blue. And they both weigh the same, actually. 8.8 .8 pounds. Ditto is just a blob that looks like it could be a failed experiment but it couldn't just take the form of Mew. Therefore, it stays at its usual blobby self. Another piece of evidence is that both Mew and Ditto are the only Pokemon that learn the move Transform. Who knows, maybe in the future, it could be confirmed that these two are pretty much the same. Um, and to be honest, I'm hoping so, because 
I really like this theory, so who knows, maybe in a future generation, we might get our answer. Those who played the original Pokemon games will likely remember Missing No. The glitched Pokemon allowed players to duplicate any item in red and blue, effectively providing players with an unlimited amount of rare candy and Master Balls. Though many consider it to have been a simple programming error or the remnants of a removed Pokemon, some have other ideas about the origins of Missing No. It has long been believed that Pokemon are stored as digital data while in their Pokeballs or a PC box, and one theory takes this idea a step further. It suggests that if stored digitally for too long, the data can become corrupt, causing the Pokemon to become Missing No. Others have suggested that this could be failed Mew clones like Ditto, which would also make sense given that they show up close to the Pokemon Mansion, where other cloning experiments are also known to have taken place. We may never get to know the true, the true backstory to Missing No, but one thing we do know for sure is that we probably won't ever hear about it ever again.